Now this is a super gun spot and we hunted him in Austria. At times it was very steep and made some mistakes. I broke my rifle but all in all it was a great trip and I'm still not above giving you some expert tips. Okay, today's task is simply to reassemble the rifle, put the silencer on, add 9 clicks and see how well we maintain zero. So we'll just reassemble the rifle, just as I would after travel. So when this happens, it's usually the tilting block not fully lifted, so you just press the bus stud and lift it back up. That's it. Forehand just pops into place. The silencer. Maybe quick lock adapter. And it's on. Now the scope. Made this tool to better control the amount of torque I'm putting on the screws or levers rather. Because the rear one is interfering with the scope turret. The rear one, I can't really get my fingers in. So that's where this tool comes in handy. Twist it. Even though I can't extend the lever. And have a long aiming surface across the action to see that the tension is correct. Now put the silencer on. Yeah, added nine clicks. And we'll just see how the zero is. Checking natural point of aim. Slightly off, adjusting. Note how I check the natural point of aim. That is crucial to deliver this kind of precision. That's me on. Okay. So that's an absolutely perfect shot. And always cover your lenses. It doesn't take a genius to understand that you cannot shoot your game if you cannot see it. And also, when you are lying in the prone position, be careful to look at the side of the scope. I don't know if you can see the breath. Make a habit of looking on the side and you're going to have the hot wet air going on the side of the scope and not on the lens. So there you have it, a center hit according to how my rifle is zeroed. Now if you remember the last impact, I moved it one centimeter to the right and sure enough, you have the impact one centimeter to the right. Nothing of what I do is especially difficult. I mean, you've seen it over the years. It's very basic routines and I deliver solid results almost every time. Now, we're going to do one more shot at the ballistic bar, which at this, from this position, comes in at 442. The calibration of this turret is for a lot warmer weather, 12 degrees Celsius and an air pressure of 970 hectopascal. So, you most likely have a higher pressure because of the beautiful weather and it's significantly colder. And the target is at 442, but the weather will move the bullet impact down, so I dialed 450, which should bring it slightly higher. It will likely negate most of the weather effect. That's the bar. Oh. It's a heavy mirage. On the bar. Natural point of aim is good. Breathe and shoot. <sighs> yeah. So this was at uh, 442 with a lightweight rifle not deemed suitable for long range by many people. And this was hopefully just another demonstration that the solution is not in the gear, but it is in the basic techniques. And if there is one thing I would like for you to take away, it is natural point of aim. This episode contains sponsored items. Before you go, subscribe, like and comment.
click the bell if you want notifications of new episodes. So there's certainly enough uh, chamois about. And it seems to be <laughs> that this is one of those few days where everything just lines up and we're going to have a good day out in the mountains. The weather is nice, company is good and I'm seeing so many animals that I have basically lost count. Okay, so I think we pack up here and start eating away on the elevation and see what we can get in front of the camera. As usual, I'm using my 6.555 Kipro and out of courtesy to the people I'm with, yeah, I'm carrying the rifle empty. I do have a silencer now so it will be a lot more pleasant experience for the ears and the surroundings. Okay, I just strap this to the backpack and we'll get going. small area in the summer get a little bigger a bigger range and chasing after the toes so you can see them and uh, so like now the weather when we get the snow on the tops they're coming down yeah, we saw that. so they're, they're a little easier to hunt and how old are they when they start to participate two three years yeah um, if there are enough enough old bugs they will participate Five and up, and if there are not no old bugs, they can participate with one. And will the bug try to just find one female, or will you have many like the red deer? He's trying to, to hurt the females. He's looking for little groups on the ridges, and when he finds one, he's protecting them. Size group with a successful bug. In this area where it's uh, the view is not very far, I think mostly up to five. Two to five. Because they are difficult to go. Yeah. yeah. It's real difficult if they go over the ridge. There's another pack and it's chasing them away.
reload. Is he not hit? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it. He's coming to the left. To the, to the left. Yeah, he's coming to the left. He's not at all hit. Nope. Stopping behind trees. Yeah. Now he's hit. Reload. Auto ammunition. Oh shit. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Okay. Technically this was an easy shot because it's a short range, the animal is right ahead of us and I had ascertained that I had obstacle clearance to the branches. I didn't really see that fur, but as the recoil shot revealed, uh, it didn't touch any of the branches. I still didn't hit the animal. This was a very easy shot which more or less causes the brain to go full autopilot and the brain reaches for the end, the solution, and it's going to skip all the intermediate steps. The brain wants to shoot the animal and it recognizes that when I have the side picture, I just shoot. Now, and as you saw on all three shots, I broke the trigger immediately when I had the perfect side picture. However, as the recall shows you, there are no regard whatsoever for the position building. I don't have natural point at all and the rifle goes way off. And especially on shot number two, all in the open, super easy shot fully rested and as you can see from the recoil I'm nowhere near the animal. So even though this was a very simple shot I'm skipping enough of the intermediate steps to cause two misses. Now after those two misses we have a period where both me and Lucas we are watching the animal and we are making sure that this animal is not wounded in any way. And the smart thing to do now would be to just stop shooting, find out what was wrong, check the rifle and still I didn't do it. I continued and I fired a third shot. I managed to apply natural point of aid this time. The shot took where it's supposed to do and it fell straight down. As I said in episode 362, the mountain training, do not articulate that you are going to shoot that animal because that will do what you just saw. It completely locks the decision. You will stay in system one and you will keep moving towards the decision you have already made, your brain is not going to open up and evaluate again. Because if I had opened up, assessed the situation again, I would never have fired shot number three. Now, sometimes you are affected by external factors and you can't really control how much sleep you're getting. Being tired will lead to stupid decisions. And when you get your sleep cut down to that three, two, three, four hours, you need to realize that you are going to be a fair bit more vulnerable. As it was, I'm completely locked in the system one thinking, and the only thing I'm moving towards is killing that animal and putting a bullet in its chest. So this lofty talk is in no way an excuse, but it's simply trying to give you an insight into the mechanics, which causes even skilled people to do incredibly stupid things. This was a disaster that luckily ended good. Did you saw him? Is went he? Did he went down in the, the drainage or? Hell no. Yeah. Yes, I followed him. He was sliding on his back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's dead. But yeah. did he went down or? Yes. He, he, he went 
fell down. I think it's a shitty place to get him. Um, there's a little uh, waterfall. Maybe we are lucky and he's above the waterfall and not in the waterfall. So that's the exit right here. Right behind the shoulder bone, right where it's supposed to be. It's so steep. Oh, sorry, deep. Man's health. I must thank. Around here, the tip is from the first year, so here is one and a half. A yearling. There is the yearling, two year old, three year old, four, six, and seven. Before the shot, uh, I thought it would be a, a little bit older because he's a little light here and he got a bony, heavy structure of his body. Yeah. He has a little smaller body, but everything looked mature. Okay. Let's uh, see if we can get this hunting day on its way. And I have checked the target, which I should have done on arrival. The target shows an impact shift, but not in any magnitude that would explain the poor shooting I did yesterday. So basically, lack of professionalism, the inability to adhere to the rules is what will cause you the most problems. The gear flaws we just saw on the targets, they are minor. The rest of the errors are made up here. Yeah, the uh, chamois up on the left side, on the on one of the little side ridges, his snow is blown off and so they can yep. get easy feet up there. And we are trying to get up on the right side because uh, we will have a better view. And you're not worried about the wind? I see the snow. In this case, I'm not worried about the wind because um, out of my experience up there, it will not be a problem. The wind will go right down. We are uh, beneath. Uh, yes. In altitude to the chamois, it's not it's not swirly today. It's right to the left side, and yeah, he, you can see on the right hand side there how, how it's yeah, pushed down it's as well. Pushing down, yeah. yeah. Uh, another problem if we get uh, up downwind from the uh, the chamois, yeah, we will be up close to them, really close, um, and on these little ridges, it could be that the wind is swirly and possibility to get spotted by the chamois first is a lot higher to yes. looking to get a little distance and have a more overview of the area. So basically as long as we stay lower than them yeah. we should be safe. It shouldn't be a problem.
That's the shoulder bone right there. So that's success. I broke the shoulder bone so she, he couldn't move away and he basically died on the spot then. <laughs> As usual. Fell down into an awful space. Which means there will be some work ahead. Can you take the stick? Man's health. Man, man's dank. I think this is one of those stone fall places. So I'm afraid yesterday was the last day of hunting for me, but uh, you really have to expect this when you have this kind of nice things in my brutal hands. Nothing dramatic, I just had a very small slide and went into the ground with a full force of my body and it, of course it broke. But uh, it ended a good life and I shot a 14 year old Gams book with it. So it definitely went out on a high. But, uh, today is another day and we will be out again. And even though I won't be hunting myself today, I'm going to be out with Sebastian, which is uh, one of the professional hunters that work here. And I'm going to join him for his hunting. I'm sure that's going to be equally good as going out hunting myself. Because you need to understand that when you are out with a professional hunter, you are out with someone who has such a big head start and he is so far from your own level that it's going to be a proper learning experience if you treat it as such. and over and up. And not fresh tracks. I think you can see the leg. Yeah, and the blood. Yeah. 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 Hang on, let me see how far. Yeah, I'll throw it off to you. This is just rock with water. Yeah, I figured there was a lot of snow there, so if I fell... Ah, it's a beautiful shot, perfectly placed behind the shoulder.
Okay, so that's all that I finished for this time. So even though I wasn't hunting today, I also had an excellent time being out with Sebastian. So if you do want an adventure here in Europe, I think Chamois hunting is one of the more accessible adventures you can have. It's just great. Subscribe to the THLR channel by clicking the left logo icon so you'll be shooting straighter than a drunk skunk before the sun shines over northern Norway.